Hello everyone, welcome back again. This is Jesse, and then in today's tutorial, we learn about how to work with rows in data frames. So we'll be learning how to select multiple rows and columns in Julia, right, using data frames. So first of all, just have to load the package. So we're using data frames, and then we're going to use our table. This storing it inside DF. So DF is going to be this. So so to recap of what we have done so far, there's something I just learned over the which is quite short, simple for you to use. That is, if a comma follows after a colon, then columns, right? Then if a if the other way around is rows, right? So the inverse of this is rows. The comma following the colon is very, mostly is used to deal with columns, right? Okay, that is something simple. So, so now let's move on to some of the things you can do. So now let's see how to do all these things that I'm showing here. First of all, step by step, so we have df I'm going to list everything for us. So, if I want to check for the number of rows that I have, I just go with n row, right? Not n row. I'm going to list all the rows, so that's 155, which is quite nice. So, if I want to select a specific row, there are several ways I can do. So, first of all, I just go with df, and then the row that I want to select is let's say 3. And then, as I said in this sentence of this, right? So I, we are telling with rows. So I'm going to bring this. The way I do is like this. It's going to select row three for me. Perfect. So that I just selected row three and then a column. This one, it is seen it as a what? A column. At the moment I add this to it, it's going to see it as only a row. See, see the difference so if i omit this i'm going to see the entire thing as a column because this is equivalent to this is equivalent to df3 it's equivalent to which is true right this is equivalent to df3 but the moment i bring it this way it's going to give us false because that is not equivalent to it right okay so that is how to understand it okay so let's see so the moment i bring the uh, the column after the comma, it becomes a row. It's going to refer to all the rows. So to pick row 3 and every one of them. The same if I want to pick row 15 or 10, we're going to pick everything. So it's, it's telling me I go to row 10 and select every column. That is the meaning of this. Right? So if I want to select a specific column, right, I'll just go with DF. Let's do the same thing. Row 10, I want to select, let's say, this, right, 3.1. So one, two, three. So that's going to select. Okay, I counted it earlier. So one, two, three. So it's going to select this one. So if I want to select this one, it's going to be two. And then it's going to select it perfectly for us. So this is how to select a specific rule. So the comma, and then this, right? Okay. So let's learn how to use the I lock and then lock equivalent in Julia. That is something like how to use the I lock and lock equivalent. So to do that, this is how to do that in Python. But in Julia, it's quite simple to do that. You just go with this format of DF, right? If you want to select that is location or in this location, two. If you want to select something like this, you just go as we learned in the previous one here. So let's say two, and then the comma, and then this, right? It's going to select the entire rule and then everything inside the column so that is an example of the df that i look this is how to do that in julia again if you want to select multiple rows right you want to select multiple rows you can just use the same format of doing it so if i want to select multiple it's going to be like df so i want to select row two three and four right that is the rules i want to select i'm going to put this one again inside a square bracket and then i'm going to put my semicolon here so it's going to select the entire stuff so row two two three four and then everything inside so that is how to do that so this is equivalent to this which we have here right this is equivalent for python df.lock so that is what i did here so let's try it again i want to select multiple rows right and a column this is the synthesis for python julia to say similar get the same thing then two five let's make two five and then fifteen right that's the first one 
and then we bring our comma and then this so it's going to select the entire thing for us that is how to do that this the lock equivalent for that okay so let's see how to select individual rows two three four five of multiple columns so to do that it's just going to be like this df right individual two four six that is what you want to select so put it inside another square bracket now i want to select column separate length and then separate it so it's going to be like this right so something like this that i've done so i can actually if i do it like this it's going to select it's going to be like this one select everything but i do i want only this one and then this one so how do you think i'll do that so it's quite simple you can just do it like this since it's like this format right you can just put this one in also another square to separate length stick <laughs> you know i make mistake with this right that is the first thing to do and then you're going to go with this or this remember then set 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 top width right the moment i do it like this it's going to select the entire stuff from so let me close it so this one for this one and then it's going to select perfectly for us so you, the first one is you group the rows together separated by a comma then you group the columns together right okay so let's see how to do the last one how to select a group of group of rows from 5 to 10 in python you just do the df.ilog but in julia which is quite simple you just go with this format of what i showed earlier so df right i want to select from 5 to 10 so i just go to start with 5 to 10 and then my comma like this and then this remember if a column follows a comma it's talking about all the rules so all the rules and then all the columns right which is quite nice and perfect which is quite nice right cool. that is nice so let's see how to answer this question so how do you select the third rule of a column two and four so let's see you column one two three and four right so if i want to select third rule this of column two to four how do i do that so it's quite simple in python this is how it's going to be done but in julia it's going to be done as this df i want column three i got that i want to select column three a rule three right and then with my comma like that then I'll select from column and then if I do it like this format it's going to give me an error because it's going to see it as different so you can either do it like this format right now if I do it like this let's see it's giving us a method error so the solution to finding is, is just to make it like this if you want this solution you can make it like names then df so if you do it like this it's going to work perfectly for us so that is the solution to that so you have to put the whole thing into the column trying to learn that i'm referring to this particular range of columns that is one of the ways of doing it another method of doing it is just quite, quite simple this is the rule then the next one i'm going to do is going to be inside this bracket two and then four so if I do that, it's going to select perfectly, just like the previous one. So this is the equivalent of this. False. Hmm. Do you know why it's false? Let me show you. If I do this, it's true. Because this one was omitting the third one. So that is how it is. Okay. Okay. So let's see how we can be able to iterate over rows and then columns, right? So to do that, you just go with, let's say, a normal sentence which you have as df, which is this. So to iterate over columns, we just use each course, which is equivalent of either items. In Julia, you don't have to import iterations. You just go to iterate with this. And for the, the equivalent of iter rows is each column, right? So to do that, let's see how to do that. 
Okay, now df. I so for i in let's say let's make it for calls for column in each calls, right? df print i call and then end. It's going to print the entire stuff for us for each and every of the columns, which is quite nice. So it's at it's iterating through each column and bringing everything out. So you can also do the same thing if you want to iterate through so that is going, going. If you want to do the same thing for rows, you can just do that for row in each row. Df row. Oh, oh, I not finish. Okay, sorry. Then print i row and then end. It's also going to print it perfectly for us so to go through each and every of the rules nice that's how to do that actually so thank you for watching if you have any question or contribution you can just put it inside the comment section so that everybody can benefit and please don't forget to subscribe stay blessed thanks for watching